Hey everybody, here's a very, very cheaply built power supply. This one came in a um, computer I was brought in for service, and apparently it still works just fine, but I went and pulled it because it was very, very cheaply built. I installed a power supply that was more suitable for the machine. It had the proper EMI filtering circuitry and everything else in it. So anyways, let's go ahead and have a look at this thing. This thing is so generic, they couldn't even put the brand name on it. There's no brand on it, it just tells you it's 400 watts. And they, get, they give you the outputs. And it's very, very, very light. So obviously when you have a power supply that's this light, and you can actually use it as a drum, obviously something, something is very, very cheaply built. When you see something like this, you don't want to have this inside your computer. Before we go inside and have a look, have a look at these cheap wires. They were so cheap on this thing, they couldn't even run a 3.3 volt wire to this SATA plug. If you was you try to use it on a, sol on a solid state drive, you'd have trouble because a solid state disk is what uses a 3.3 volt line, from what I've seen. This main connector, the wiring is so thin, just a 20 pin connector has, I mean, all these wires together, very thin. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some 22 gauge wire in there. I mean, this is very, very cheap. It's 24, um, 20 plus 4 pin. <clears throat> and they actually bothered to put some sleeving on here. And if you notice, the sleeving has that much room left in it. From my thumb up to here is how much empty space is in the sleeving. That gives you an idea of how cheap this thing is. A true, um, let's see, a good quality power supply. Its main connector wires will fill this up completely. Have a look at this very thin, um, very thin wires on this CPU power connector. There's some 20 gauge goodness right there. What's crazy is some OEM supplies, like especially those in e machines, have 20 gauge wiring on the CPU power connector. That's where you don't want to have it. Very, very cheap. That being said, let's go have a look inside. You're definitely going to love this. I got some peeks through the um, edges of the casing and this thing is very cheaply built. Definitely looks to be manufactured by Palmax Lehman. They used to be better quality back in let's see, the early 2000s, but now they're absolute junk. And oh yeah, they're so cheap they couldn't put four screws in the fan. They got dimples here and here in the casing. And on a screw here and here. That's very cheap. Probably the only thing I'll salvage out of this power supply would be the switch and maybe the fan. Everything else will probably get chunked in the trash. I usually prefer not to waste my time with units like this. Okay. Have a look at this. Oh, this is definitely a very cheap one. Have a look at that. Now, mind you, it was powering this machine right here. A Celeron computer. 2.4 gig, 768 megs of memory. Used to have 256 when it was stock. 6 gig hard drive. Basic machine. Doesn't use a whole lot of power at all. It's not what you want to see in a power supply. Surprisingly, they actually use optocouplers for the um, feedback um, circuitry rather than a third transformer. That blue transformer is a 5 volt standby. That right there is the main transformer. Look at how small that is. That is absolutely pitiful. I've seen better and cheap power supplies, actually. 
but you'll find this in some chief max and some lead main units with power max that kind of stuff there aren't that many capacitors here on the secondary side only three large caps and you see two small ones you normally find a lot more capacitors on your secondary than just that let's go ahead and have a look at the secondary side a bit more look how small that coil is very very small and that actually includes the plus 3.3 volt power too normally you'll find that on a second coil but that little bitty coil does everything I'd say that's pretty bad off have a look at that tiny coil it's a very very tiny coil usually you'll find the plus 3.3 volt coil separate from this let's see here we have a what appears to be a 30 amp rectifier that's probably for the 5 volt there's so much dust in this thing you can't really read much anything can't really read it much but we know it's very poor have a look at this only one main switcher and this is a half bridge you see the tiny um, capacitor back there usually on the half bridge supply you'll find one of those um, dipped brown capacitors and usually on those half bridge units you'll have two main switchers this one you have just one and maybe there's one on the other side of the heatsink nope that's the only one and you see that component at the very edge that's a plus 5 volt standby transistor it's a two transistor design unit and normally even that you'll find uh, much larger and better quality supplies this one here is tiny like very tiny this power supply is junk it's a wonder it still worked and it's only they got the um, main capacitors facing the opposite direction so that way you can't see the ratings on them then it won't you see them because they're probably only 220 microfarads judging by the size very pitiful trying to get trying to see here I can't see the ratings but I'm assuming they're 220 microfarad look at the size of those things I'm going to grab you a 470 microfarad capacitor just to put things into uh, perspective. Right here is a 470 microfarad capacitor. Even this in here is a bit on a small size. You'll find these in, um, usually in 250 watt power supplies. This piece of crap is rated for 400 watts. In 400 watt supplies you'll usually find I'd say 680 microfarad um, capacitors on um, a double style circuit that uses the voltage selection switch but this one you got very small caps I mean just look at this they're about the same in terms of height but you look at the width of these two that being said better quality supplies have proper EMI filtration another thing to show you would be the um, NTC thermistor this is the you know, inrush current limiter Usually, better quality supplies will have slightly larger variants of this. This in here is doable, but usually you'll find bigger ones and better supplies. If you have a look at this random spots on this board, you might notice there's a little bit of discoloration in spots. Now, keep in mind, not even power on a high end system, I could run this with a 200 watt supply if I wanted to. and this piece of crap is rated for 400 watts yeah you go ahead and try to power a 400 watt um, system with this and, yeah a system that would need a 400 watt power supply you go ahead and try to power one with this and see how long this lasts it'll probably blow up as soon as you turn on the computer and if you notice we get the four diode treatment here normally you'll find a bridge rectifier in this spot rather than four diodes so anyways that's just a general look at a um, 
cheap power supply. Now before I wrap this up, I'll go ahead and pull out the fan, just for the heck of it. And to give you John an idea of how thin this is, barely after at all, I just, I just bent it. Bent it up pretty good. Looks almost like an Omega symbol. Now it's a W. Isn't that just wonderful? Let's go ahead and get the fan out <clears throat> before I wrap this up. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. Now I mentioned earlier how this thing, um, they're so cheap on this thing, they couldn't even, I like to put four screws in the fan. I'd say that's pretty bad off. When they design a power supply and it's so cheap that they can't even have four screws in the fan. No branding on the fan. Feels pretty cheap, but is um, usable. Bearing's good in it. Not making any noises. So yeah. And I'm pretty sure this is wired into 12 volt power too. There's no fan control circuitry in this thing either. Anyways, um, that's a general look at a very cheap quality power supply. This is something you don't want to have in your computer. So when you go looking for a replacement power supply for, for your compact Rosario or any OEM system when the power supply fails, don't get the cheapest thing you can find. Expect to spend $30 to $40 for a decent supply for your system, not $10. If you spend that much, you'll get this piece of crap. And this right here is not good for your computer because not only does it put very um, poor quality power into your system, It'll also backfeed a lot of noise onto your uh, main line in your house, so you definitely don't want to have this running in your computer. So anyways, any questions or comments, feel free to ask and thanks for watching.